So what we've seen so far is the following. I mean, we define H1GA as the space of principal homogeneous spaces. <coughs> uh, and we've seen that we have uh, this coordinate uh, style des uh, description of those. Now I will uh, identify this space with yet another space. So I want to uh, discuss extensions. which I also fix. And uh, so now once you have uh, a GA space, uh, actually if nothing bad, uh, uh, A is very direct. Of course, whenever G up to A by automorphism, I can form this sort of uh, semi-direct product. Uh, a compatible action of G and A in some space is, just, is nothing but having uh, this cross product, uh, semi direct product uh, acting on the space. As an E space. Right. And, uh, but now, now what is the. And say the P here stands for principal, so the, the action. Uh, is simply transitive. The A action. There is no stabilizer. Uh, it means that S A is zero. This means that I can view this. Um, so actually, this map from S to G is, and this is a scanner. 
is injected, so it's an isomorphism. Uh, so I'm getting so this short exact sequence. This short exact sequence splits, right? I know that this is a semi-direct product with G, but I'm getting here. Right? Whenever I'm getting a principal homogeneous mess, I'm getting a number splitting, and vice versa. Whenever you, you do give me such an S, uh, I can form E mod S, I can form dot space, and by those two properties of S, the fact that uh, it goes on to G, which means that the A option is, is transitive, and that it goes with trivial counter, it means the A, A action, there is no uh, stabilizer in A to that uh, special point. Uh, so, uh, and we get, so, uh, but maybe I'll already write under some identification. This is isomorphic to uh, all splitting. So the homomorphism is of this form when I identify E with uh, that semi-direct product uh, for anything to be a homomorphism. So this, this will give you a condition on those A's, AG, which is exactly the cosine condition. Do you take all splittings as different or do you identify? So I do identify some. I do identify splittings, which are uh, naturally conjugate to another. So I uh, yeah, defined, I leave you to make it precise, it for those of you who don't know that really. Uh, defined a natural uh, identification of splitting, which well, I guess so I'll show the connection. So it is exactly to the cost identification. Uh, so make make a natural identification of splittings. So this, this is a standard identification of splittings. Uh, so find what is yourself. Uh, and show this uh, identification corresponds to uh, uh, the homology relation. So again, what I did here, I took this guy here as we defined principal of the spaces, and this discussion gave us a natural identification 
of the space of which one of these spaces, DNA, and splitting of these uh, short exact sequence. And what I'm asking you to do is, well, previously we gave an identification of this space and then by coordinates, show that it fits. It must be, right? But this also, if you don't know it in advance, this will lead you to the right identification of the uh, space. <coughs> So uh, since we have three models for H1, one has principal homogeneous spaces, one has split extensions, and one has uh, cos factors, uh, model modulation, I, I, I will give you a three different uh, definition of the new action. of G and an action of, of A divided by the natural diagonal action of A. Uh, so G is still act on the space of orbits, right? Of A orbits, because G was commuting with A. So G acts here via its action on uh, P. Usually I think about the, the P action, the A action on P as a, as a right action, as we did before. So this formula here, so this is, this is by definition, uh, it's a space P times X, uh, modulo the relation P, P, A, X. Natural identification of this space with A. I, I mean, I, sorry, with X itself. As an A space, P is just a copy of A. So I, I took the product with A and divided by A. So I, I got myself a space which is not naturally, because there is not, no natural identification of P with A, but it, 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 is, it is a copy of P. Oh, sorry, it is a copy of X. 
You may think about the new G action on X itself. I use the other left left rotation. I know. You can you can so from you you are invited to Sorry? If all spaces are left actions. Yeah, the, the, the two actions, the A and G uh, actions are there. Okay, so this is, oh, this is one thing. Uh, second, well, this is um, using this language. If uh, A and G act on X, then actually X is an A. And this P corresponds to a lift. I guess when I think about extensions, I, I call the elements of the cohomology S's, right? But this is the corresponds to P. Uh, so this gives me a, a G action on S. Say, by the way, in these split extensions, I have uh, one which is better than the others, right? Or at least it's special in my mind. It's the one that gives this structure to me. There is, a, there is a, the basic split here of, uh, of E. So this is the natural one. If I would use this, this is the original action of G on X. But now I'm getting a new one. Let's see. In coordinates, uh, check that uh, x goes to gx and excuse me, I will write a uh, right uh, action here uh, on x is uh, a g action. Of course, that equation will tell us that this thing here, assuming x was a, a right a action, right a, right a space, left g space, this thing over here, gx, a g inverse, uh, <coughs> is a new action. I think something doesn't add up in the, what, what, in, in the first in one. Why is the g action mod to the caution? Sorry? Why the G action runs through the caution? Because G and A commute. How oh, G and A commute? It's still the... Mm -hmm. Sorry, not commute. G normalizes A. Excuse me. Still, even the A action, it, it acts by diagonal. A acts diagonally. Whenever you have, uh, on the space of orbit, you expect some normal group action, the original group act. If G act on no, G, H, N is normal in H. H act on a space X, there is a, a G mod N action on the, the space of orbits, X mod N. And these are the orbits. And these are the orbits. You got it there. Yes. I, I guess, uh, uh, sorry. Switching from left to right, I change. Uh, on the yeah, so it's A minus one. Uh, if, I, if I want to write it, uh, I, I will erase this in a minute. I, I should have written like that if I consider the two left actions. If I consider right action, it should have been like. Uh, I should have write here X A inverse or something. Try not to ask the question. 
so there is a choice here of uh, taking the uh, actual representative. And there is a choice here of taking the actual representative in this one. And there is a choice here of taking the actual representative in the cosine. Modulo commanders. Uh, but the action that you will get uh, will be naturally as a So, uh, I will not do this exercise for you. But check that the three actions above. Same action in different skies. And, uh, and he and a well defined model. I mean, there are well defined uh, in any case, but they're always okay. But they are the same if you. Take something in a something in the equivalence classes. Describe here. Uh, body uh, okay. So what, what happens when X is in terms of homogeneous? Yeah. That's that's very really interesting. Okay. It's some sort of it's not multiplication. <laughs> it's only it's some 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 sort of a point multiplication. It's not a well defined multiplication, but yes. So due to the incongruity of a, we are assuming, uh, not assuming, the connectivity that we are not assuming, uh, we don't have a group structure on H1, but we do have various H1s, actually, uh, okay, so maybe we are, this is the language of splitting, to express this, uh, we have here we have we have one split that we choose uh, a priori, and we discussed all possible splits, and we said that this split that we choose a priori is special. It's not really fair, right? Uh, and one is, I, I can take another guy here and use this in order to define the, uh, the semi, uh, semi dive product structure here and say that this guy is my, is my special one and all the other are twists. And uh, this is exactly what I want to discuss now. Also, okay, this will be later. Maybe I'll clarify this up in a minute. Let uh, me take the point of view of one. of taking things modulo A as a universal property. Whenever I have a map from P times X to something which is A variant, it factor through this own space. Right? So uh, this map over here 
This is a G map. With respect to this twist G action that we have, uh, and the map that takes, or the operation that takes the maps from X to Y to those maps between uh, the twist form of them is exactly uh, is, is a function. Right? Also, uh, I claim that uh, <coughs> if I'm having uh, x and y, I can perform the twist of x and the twist of y and take the product of those. And this will be naturally. And of course, G act on this one, and G act on that one, and I'm looking at the diagonal action. But I can take X times Y with the diagonal action of G and A, and twist that one, and get the G action here, which again comes from diagonal action. And I, I leave it to you to check that there, there, there is a natural uh, identification here. As in this space. Uh, naturally the same as G spaces. So this twist I'm having is a map from G A spaces to G spaces, given by an element of each one. Also, uh, the group structure of A. Follows from uh, this consideration, right? Uh, what is a group? A group is an object. I mean, a group is something that has multiplication map from A to A, and it should satisfy some axioms. I know, like associativity. That I can call this such bad on, etc., etc., etc. You know this very well. And uh, when I twist, because my twist respects uh, products. When I twist the book, I get the book. Of course, you can, you're welcome not to trust me, and 
I need to check this using some explicit uh, uh, formulas here, and you will get the same answer. But uh, if you twist A using the, the, the conjugation action of A on itself, use it and use whatever call cycle to twist the G action, you will get again a, a group with a, <coughs> with a new G action. Ah, but those guys, change the group. Instead of looking at A, maybe I will look at a, a twisted structure on A. Um, now, Check this, just use this understanding of tweaking that we have. This is very easy. Uh, I will not really check it for you. Uh, <clears throat> if x itself is principal on genus GA space, the twist, the fact that the, the principal on genuity. So, I'm claiming that here this twisting thing takes principal homogeneous GA space, spaces in principal homogeneous GA prime spaces, and gives me a natural identification of uh, H1GA with H1GA. As commuting actions and again I, I will leave you to take this of G A and A prime. Oh sorry, I commit out. homogeneous A space. When I twist it, I'm getting a principal homogeneous A prime space. When A is a twist, when A prime is a twist of A. And those actions, and again, I will let you figure this out. Those actions commute. So this is some sort of a bimodal. This is some trivial thing that compare the A and A prime actions. <clears throat> and I can use this guy, so this is I started thinking of this as a principal homogeneous A space, but now I want to think about it as a principal homogeneous A prime space. And this is. I want to view this in this direction. I mean, I, I, I can 
I can use it in both direction. The same thing. You know, they intertwine elements here and elements here. It's the thing. It's like a bimodal. And it's one of the two. And uh, it, gives, it gives my natural identification. But I want to view it in this direction because now when I write it like that, and I'm leaving many of the checking off of these things for you to check. But um, here I have the special points. Just a prime as, as an a prime space, right? When I take a prime and apply that nice to it, <coughs> it is mapped to what? No. I'm applying this over here. So you need to be P, and, and there is a, a, an action on the other, other side on this P. So this will be P as an A space. So again, uh, this, this is all piece of tautologies, so it's, there, there, there is no depth here, but many things to, to get used to and to, to check, and so I, I, don't want, I, I, don't, I don't have a good way to deliver it. A prime, can, can it be viewed as an element of H1 GA? It is a principle. A prime? No, A prime uh, is a group. Okay, but in particular, G X and A. Uh, as an element of H1 G A prime, but there is no natural action of A on A prime. Okay, it doesn't I, 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 I can't view it here. Th those two things are, are different. Okay. I'm now I'm, I'm trying to establish an isomorphism between them, but not just any. Whenever you have a, a principal homogeneous space, the twisting by it gives you a map from one H1 to another H1. This map will be, uh, I can serve as an identification, but uh, it, it has a special quality which I want to emphasize. Uh, and I, I guess my motivation here is, is I'm reading in the air because I, want, I have a motivation which I didn't uh, expose yet. Pretty soon I will discuss a uh, short and long exact signal. And there is a notion of kernel. And for both itself, this is a, a degenerate notion of kernel. Uh, and whenever, if x is x, comma, small x is all the set, and uh, y, comma, small y is a pointed set. And uh, it's the point of map, so it takes x to y, little x to little y. The kernel of this map is the prior image of the point y here. Little x is always in the kernel, as I know one is all, always in the kernel of the homomorphism of three groups, but maybe there, there, there is more. Pretty soon I will discuss kernels of, uh, of uh, maps with three pointed sets. But the thing is that uh, knowing that something is in the kernel tells me very little about elements here which are, which are not uh, the special point themselves. The point in twisting here is that if I'm allowing myself to move to, to another group, to a twisted group, a prime, any element here could be made a special point right there. Okay? So this is something that uh, is the only, this is the only reason I, I mentioned this. So this is something I want you to bear in mind. There is a set of ontology that uh, whenever I'm viewing H1GA, this is a set is a, with a pointed set, I can twist the structure of it such that any given point will become a special uh, element uh, of that twisted thing. So n prime sits here not as conjugation, actually. But, uh, H prime came to live using the conjugation, the conjugation action yeah, but when you're looking at as a special point, it's just... As a special uh, points here, then this is, here I'm looking at on A prime spaces, and take the, the left or right uh, action of uh, A prime on itself, and this is it. This, uh, 
this is the structure of it, it has a special point. So it's different from the separation? Yes, it's different. Okay, so uh, maybe I already said too much about that. Uh, and I, I want to, to discuss not exactly about that. Which uh, we gave uh, three flavors to, which are identical. One, the space of quasi homogeneous spaces. Two, the space of uh, splitting extensions. Three, co cyclic smaller co boundaries. And, uh, okay, this was the, the first uh, hour basically of our discussion. And uh, then, now I, I okay, and then as such, they are collected sets. And now I'm discussing a, a very natural process which keep the pointed set structure somehow, but uh, make the emphasis on another point. Make the, the other one special. And maybe the, the easiest model to think of it is uh, the model of extensions. And I mentioned this. When I do extensions, I can think of any arbitrary extension as my principal one, as my, as my special one and think of other extensions as extensions with respect to that one. So you can rewrite somehow the, the, the splitting. So you can do this, this, this will be an exercise. And now I'm taking a different language, the language of principal homogeneous spaces, and, and actually I'm describing the same phenomena in that language. So it is not a triviality, not a complete triviality to still describe exactly the same phenomena, but it is, in fact, the case. And, uh, and for this, I described, uh, well, actually I described the notion of twisting of, uh, it was here somewhere, uh, the notion of the twisting of, uh, of the G-structure in various ways. And uh, it was very convenient for me to use the first way, the, the product with the principal of this one, uh, in order to see that this thing preserves various uh, uh, property. We have nicely factorially. And, um, and then now uh, we said that even then the, the, the group structure A, I can uh, twist using this and get another group A prime, another G group A prime. And, and the thing is that P, my guy, the one I was twisting with, will become a, a bimodal of A and A prime. I will have a commuting action of those. One is compatible with one G action, while one is compatible with another G action. Actually, I didn't bother to, to, to show to you explicitly that these two actions commute. Uh, it's one of, the other, one of the main things I'm leaving to you as an exercise. Uh, but then this P is principal of the space with respect to both. And I can actually use this in order to go backwards from principal of the spaces here over A prime to principal of the spaces over A by taking the twist with P over A prime. This will give me an A structure on which thing, which is A to act on it. Really. So, what you have in general is that you have like the GA spaces, which have in G spaces, and the J spaces are these H ones, and uh, an element there can move you inside the G spaces to a different GA prime space. Uh, 
so this is very important. Actually, uh, more fundamental thing than the twisting. So uh, if I, I was a bit informal in this twisting business, so uh, uh, forget it if you, if you lost that. Now, I saw we have a long exact sequence, a short exact sequence of books, or maybe not even books, a group to begin with, a big group, this is a homomorphism of groups, and this is just the B model. This is a constant space. Maybe this will be normal, and this will be a group in a minute. I will add more structure to it. But just to begin with, I claim that there is a natural uh, natural map. I can look at age, or oh, this is this of G code, and this is G space. So I can look at this is just A to the G, and every I know this homomorphism every G point, every fixed point in G will go to a fixed. And I can look at the fixed point in C, right? They have uh, the G structure here, so I can look at the G fixed point. So there is a well defined G action in the space here. I'm looking at the fixed point here. And actually, uh, I want to claim that those are maps of pointed sets. So, of course, since this is a group, the fixed point set is a group as well, and I have zero in here, or one in here. And it, under the own, it must go to one, which is here. And actually, I defined, I guess, I will define the, the trivial concept of A here to be the point set here, the point, the special points here. So this is also so Fibers over each point is is a principle of genus space, right? A acts here on the left, and the cosets as an A space is a principle of genus space, of course. And G acts uh, on these, on these, and uh, of course this is a this is a G equivalent map. If I'm having here. I'm having here. Uh, a point which is G fixed is X. This means that as a G space, the fiber over it, copy of A, is not moving. I mean, uh, this fiber is G variant. So this gives me a compatible G action on that A space. So this gives me a principle of genus A space. Is it up there? This is called the connecting model. Again, X here, a G invariant point, I give up from this guy here to a principle of genus. So I'm, taking, I'm looking at the, at, the, at the fiber over such point in B. So this is a copy of A. And G act on everything here, on B. Sometimes uh, it jumps from fiber to fiber. 
but the fiber model at G fixed point is endowed with a specific G, uh, a fixed G action on that fiber alone, uh, compatible with the A action, of course, uh, so this is the heat. And now H1GA, this is to see, it is, uh, I guess I didn't say, it, but it is functorial. So I can go to H1G. Okay? Up to now, uh, this makes sense, this completely makes sense in that setting. Uh, so now, maybe A is actually normal in B. Applying the functoriality, and from there I can uh, go to it has to do with like A1GC. There is a map B2C, homomorphism of forms, and I can H1GC. Okay, so this is the map of homomorphism of forms. Okay, and this is the map of G right here. And if you give me an element here, maybe now think about as a split. I'm adding this one over here. This is my S. And uh, adding this maybe pi. Then I can pull it back. So maybe let's give a name to the image. Inside here, this is a copy of G. And I have uh, its pre image. Here it is. Our inverse. Because the image uh, yeah, the, the kernel of this map is A. A, A is the kernel of uh, the map from B semi-dime G to C semi-dime G. And then I make a copy of G here. So the play image in here will be an extension of this copy of G by A. And now we know how to classify extensions. I don't know if we know, but this is a classic. If you have uh, a central uh, sub A in B, also oh, sorry, so if A is a billion, and this is the case, uh, these, these kind of extensions are classified by this. So this is S norm to E in this notation. Maybe it was a bad name because I used it. That's what okay. <coughs> And you should check that this is uh, this is this what defines job. Sorry? 
Yes. So uh, what uh, now I want to say, and maybe I will not write it down, is that when, when A is a billion, uh, this one and that one and this one all, all make sense, and when also when B is a billion, all, all make sense, the, the, the coincide with the classical, uh, whenever A, B is a B, A, B, C, then I, uh, a billion, those uh, cohomology sets that uh, what we find here are identical with the classical ones, and you can take whatever interpretation of those things uh, as you want to, to make this identification. Um, I mean, maybe the interpretation of H1 by split extensions is classical, certainly the, the interpretation by actual cosine is classical. Um, <coughs> What else? So I want to say that uh, this long exact sequence that we have until here, uh, if we have the right assumption or short term, any assumption, etc., uh, is exact. Exact in what sense? In the sense that I described uh, before. Uh, the image. checking for you, but uh, just in order to check, just to understand the maps. But the way I describe these maps, you don't need to write the cos cycle equation ever. Don't do that. I mean, it's nice to do this as well, but uh, you don't need to do it. You just have to understand those maps as, as I described, and everything is rather easy. What is the one between H1A and H1A? H1A to H1A. Okay, so uh, you're asking the functoriality of H1, about the functoriality of H1. Oh, okay, this is H1G. H1G comma something. And, uh, so that's, uh, uh, and we know three ways to say the, what the map is. something, I assume that this something is a group, it is here, and when I 
like the H1G CA suit that sees the Google's bill. Okay, that's... If it sees that, it's not a problem. Then it's... No, it doesn't even exist, but you... That. In any case, you go from, from there. The stuff from this uh, short example sequence, yes. either A is normal or not normal in B. Yes. But uh, if it's not normal, and you don't want to see it in Google, then, 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 I stop, then I stopped here. Yeah, but this sequence doesn't live in any category. You take a, from A to B, a cheap group on this. Sorry? Well, you take a short exact sequence there, and C is not a group. All the morphisms should be from the same type. You would expect this. And not that the morphism from A to B is a cheap group. You're complaining that these are homomorphism and these are not. <laughs> so we do assume in any case that the morphism from A to B respects the proofs function. Yes, this, this is a homo. <laughs> yeah. It is A is normal in B. No, A is normal in B and it so happens that if, 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 even if it is a... Okay, no. Let's have a time.